Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your March 2024 mid-month general reading. We are looking at the last half of March, roughly. And this reading is for the fire sign of Leo, our lovely Leos. So that's Leo Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you're uh, cross-watching for Leo, it's also relevant. Of course, general readings tend to resonate a little differently for everyone. So if you know all of your sign placements, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, watch those videos as well for additional clarification or additional insight and perspective. And if something really does resonate with you and you'd like to take a deeper look at it, or the reading style simply resonates with you, if you're interested in a personal reading with me, for yourself or as a gift for someone else, please feel free to email me, uh, Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. You can also see that contact info attached to the description or the title of this video. I would love to hear from you. I can usually get back to you the same day or within 24 hours with more information. I do offer a pretty wide variety of readings, all areas of life, different types, lengths, styles, costs, spreads, etc. There's something in there for everyone. Uh, so, Email me if you're interested. I'd be delighted to hear from you. All right, let's move right into this reading for Leo for the last half of March. I am using the Deluxe Royal Tarot and clarifying with the Gilded Tarot, both by artist Ciro Marchetti. All right, Leo, we begin with the Seven of Cups. Kind of daydreaming, building some castles in the sky, thinking of what the possibilities and potentials of something is, maybe looking at different options for something. It's not a reality-based card yet. This is just kind of daydreaming about something, you know, how something could work out, um, different options and opportunities with the Knight of Wands. So knights are the movers and the shakers of the tarot. Knights always have a mission, a quest, something they're pursuing. So they typically represent offers or opportunities uh, and the speed at which situations move. This is the Knight of Wands, so the Knight of Fire, very action-oriented. It feels like uh, some of you may be looking at a specific opportunity um, and wondering and just kind of thinking how it might work out should you choose to take it. It may have come in rather quickly or rather unexpectedly. There may be perhaps, uh, you may be required to act on it quite quickly. Next we have the Page of Wands. Messages, messengers might be a, something to do with a young person for some of you, child or children. The Page of Fire typically represents the receiving of a message. Uh, typically a good message, but this is the Page of Wands, so a very, perhaps, maybe exciting message. It's communication coming in with justice. Reap what you sow card. Cautionary advice, of course, always being to be kind of, you know, transparent, honest, honorable morals, ethics things that we deserve. The outcome of things depend entirely upon um, what we choose on this path. It could be something that you've earned in a sense or manifested in a sense as well. For some of you, it may have something to do with, um, you know, the legal system, any legal issues. Next, we have the Nine of Swords, my least favorite card in the tarot. The Nine of Swords is a card of stress and anxiety, overthinking something, overthinking something in a negative way. Not just that you're thinking about it too much, but almost always with the worst possible outcome, you know, because it's fear of an unknown future. Well, what if this happens? And what if I do this and this happens? What if I do this and this doesn't happen? What if I don't do anything? And, you know, um, kind of going around and around. It's kind of like the mind chewing on itself, stress, anxiety, worry, fear of an unknown future, and imagining the worst. It can be quite paralyzing because swords is governed by the element of air, and air governs our intellectual landscape. So these are thoughts. With the Eight of Swords. So some of you are actually feeling quite paralyzed. I mean, the Eight of Swords is a card that says, I can't change something or I can't move forward. I can't affect any positive change in something because the challenges are too big. You know, they could be external challenges, internal challenges, or, or a combination of both, but it's how you look at it. The only person actually keeping 
Uh, the only thing keeping this person trapped in this perspective of ideas is the person themselves. You know, there's nobody kind of binding her. She could free herself quite easily and just walk through the swords. But there's something that's keeping her blind to it. You know, and, it, and with the Eight of Nine of Swords, I mean, it's quite clear here that that there's, there's some kind of news communication coming in. It feels quite positive. It feels like somehow you may have manifested it or had a, a, a large part of manifesting it, Leo. Um, it could be actively intentionally trying to manifest it or just kind of manifesting it more on an energetic level because you're unhappy within a certain situation already and have this longing for it you know energetically that's a form of manifestation too but it feels like you're 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 paralyzed to take advantage of something that may be coming in um, because you're worried about what might happen what might not happen but forewarned is forearmed. That's why we do these readings. So it doesn't have to be that extreme. From the bottom of the deck, the overall focus, Leo, is the Knight of Coins or Pentacles, the Knight of Earth, another knight. So there's definitely offers and opportunities on the table here. The Knight of Coins is the Knight of Earth. So this could be a traditional job offer. Um, it could be an offer, you know, I mean, the earth energy area of life is kind of that area of life that governs our more earthly practical things or the efforts we put into gaining and maintaining things in our life uh, that make us feel safe, solid, secure, stable, right? It could be a job offer. It could be an offer to move. It could be something that combines both of those things. In terms of emotional, I mean, love and romance, it could be that too, but it does have a practical element to it. It's the opportunity for change, and that change will make a difference in your day-to-day -day physical life as well. So let's clarify a bit. Let's take a look at that overall energy. Might be a job offer for some of you, but again, I'm seeing you kind of thinking about it, kind of daydreaming with it, playing around with it with that Seven of Cups, you know, and communication about it, but feeling held back or even paralyzed some of you by the fear of of an unknown future of leaving the place that you're at even if the place that you're at is stagnant and it's what you know fear fear of an unknown future let's take a look at that knight of coins for overall energy The Magician and the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles is gift giving, gift receiving. And I feel like it's linked to who or what, who is bringing this offer opportunity. I feel like you may have had more of a, you may have manifested it. You may have influenced the manifestation of it by your own energy. Um, because that's the Magician. The magician is the, the manifester of the tarot, the entrepreneur of the tarot. He knows how to pull everything together, all his knowledge, wisdom, experience, and resources in order to manifest what he wants into, into physical reality by actually doing all the work, right? The gift here in the Six of Pentacles. Let's take a look at this Seven of Cups and Knight of Wands. Kind of thinking about it, considering the possibility and potential, maybe a little daydreaming here on how to act. The Wheel of Fortune, divine timing and orchestration, meaning spirit guided, right? Whoever or whatever has brought you this opportunity, it's spirit-driven. This is also timing. It's the right time. God, spirit, angels, and guides. Three of wands, eight of wands. Eight of wands is movement. It's the eight of fire. It's action. It's action in a very assertive, intentional way. That action can take the form of communication. It can take the form of travel. It can take the form of just sheer determination to move forward. And the Three of Wands is a card that represents, you know, you're starting to see some of your efforts paying off and you're feeling much more hopeful, positive, and optimistic about the future. 
again, I feel like this offer or opportunity has been presented to you by spirit in the form of somebody else, like somebody bringing it into you or presenting you with it. Again, perhaps rather unexpectedly, it's an opportunity. I, I mean, it's spirit driven. That doesn't mean you have to take it. Free will, free agency, right? That's the gift we've been giving. You can say yes or you can say no to what comes into your life. Um, and I feel like here at the beginning, you're kind of daydreaming about it. You're kind of taking the time to kind of go, okay, I wonder what wonderful things could happen if I chose to take this path. And again, it feels like even though it may have, it may feel like for some of you, it's dropped out of the sky. You have had some part in influencing and in manifesting this. Let's take a look at that page of wands and justice. This is positive communication. The Five of Swords, this is a hard-won victory, winning at all costs, even though it's been very difficult, uh, even though it may have cost you, even though it, it the, there's always sacrifice to win in order to win in this card. So you have to be really ambitious or really focused on something. Again, I feel like for some of you, and, and taking this road making this change will likely require some sacrifice but i feel like you've already sacrificed a lot or endured a lot to get here next we have the two of cups the tower so we have soulmate kindred spirit here for some of you the tower is um, really an unexpected event well it's a major event typically that comes in um, and the purpose is to bring something down to end some certain aspect of your life or even just starting over again um, so that you can move forward into a better future for yourself but it may come in as rather unexpected sometimes it represents an ending we're not always all that keen about but it's always to put us on a better path here it feels like it's just this represents that this thing that that has come in this opportunity that's come in um, for some of you is just coming in out of the blue there's a soulmate kindred spirit connection here and that the next card is the king of cups so cancer pisces scorpio sun moon rising venus showing up as a male but it's a general reading could be female as well so for for many of you there's a partnership here central now because it's a, a general reading this can play out a few different ways for some of you it may be those of you that are in an already committed relationship there isn't anything wrong with your relationship there's an opportunity which is coming in, which is going to have an impact on you. Um, but it's a practical opportunity. Again, it might be uh, a new job, something in that area of life. It might require moving or traveling. Um, but it's for a better future for yourself. Some of it, it might be love and romance oriented itself. It might be for some of you that you have a soulmate coming into your life in an unexpected way. Some of you that are dealing with legal issues, it may be a sudden unexpected win because while it feels quite impactful and quite profound, I'm also getting quite a positive energy off of this news, of this communication coming in. Let's take a look at why you feel so paralyzed though here with the Nine of Swords and the Eight of Swords. We have another king, the King of Wands, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For many of you, this is you. All that fire energy feels like it's trapped, right? For some of you, there may be another fire sign involved. Some of you, it may be, you know, you're currently in a relationship with someone and somebody else has come into your life and you feel a connection with them that you don't feel with your current partner. It might be a little sticky for some of you. I mean, the king of wands is the king of fire or queen, because this is a general reading. So this is somebody who's not afraid to act, who knows what they want, who knows how to go after what they want. But for some reason, this energy feels stifled or paralyzed by fear of an unknown future. Yeah, judgment and the moon. 
This is a pretty significant choice here. Um, afraid to make a decision because the judgment usually represents being called to act. You know, there's something being placed in front of you, a choice. And this choice will have a profound impact on your life. But with the moon, there's a sense of fear of maybe deep-seated fears, realistic or not. A sense of the unknown. It's cloudy. You're afraid of making the wrong decision. You're afraid of how it will turn out because you don't know how it's going to turn out in the long run. Four of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles. You may be afraid that, you know, this is all about security and stability, right? Particularly long-term security and stability. Is this the right decision to make for my long-term security and stability? Because it feels like, <coughs> excuse me, in order to make this decision to go down a new path, it's going to be a significant, even for some of you, radical change in your life. You may have to leave people, places, situations behind. It may represent a change in lifestyle um, for some of you. It may represent moving, relocating, uh, travel, and you're, you're, you're unsure as to whether it's the right path to take. Because even if some of you are in a currently stagnant situation or position, it's what you know. It's familiar. And this beautiful new opportunity that feels like it's kind of dropped out of your, you know, into your lap from spirit. You don't know it. It's not familiar to you, of course, because you're not walking this path. And so you're you're afraid. It's kind of like, okay, if I do this, what if it doesn't work out? Or if you do this, you know, what if I lose everything I have? Or if I do this, you know, it's all that energy and it feels kind of paralyzing. So let's end with some advice, guidance, feedback from spirit. Because, I mean, this new unexpected opportunity, communication that's coming in feels very spirit-driven. Like they're trying to reorient you on a different path. Strength. <laughs> Facing your fears, doubts, insecurities, right? And the only way to face something is to actually walk through it, meaning doing the thing that we're afraid to do, examining our fears and not allowing our fears to kind of paralyze us as we see with that eight and nine of swords. Facing that. The High Priestess, trusting your instincts, your intuition, your higher self, your gut instinct. You know, it's our connection to the divine, trusting that, going within and saying, okay, what does my, what does that deep down feeling really tell me? It's also kind of an indication that for many of you, deep down, you already know what the right decision is to make, the star and the fool. The star is... Both of these cards are really based in faith. I mean, the Fool is quite a blatant card that says, you know, taking a huge leap of faith, stepping out of your comfort zone into the unknown, starting a whole new cycle in life, a whole new chapter opening up, and that's risky, you know, and that's nerve-wracking, right? The Star is a card of wish fulfillment based on faith, based on, you know, doing everything that's in front of you, taking the opportunities that Spirit gives you, even if you're afraid, even if you have no idea how they're going to work out. Um, is a card based in faith. It's a card that spirit, it's kind of like spirit saying, look, here's a path. This path is going to lead to your joy and abundance, but you have to trust. So, I mean, it's pretty clear that spirit wants you to take this new opportunity. So I think I'll leave it there. Uh, Leo, those are your messages for the last half of March. I hope you enjoyed them, found them relevant, useful, helpful, or perhaps already validated what's already going on in your life. Again, if it did resonate with you and you'd like to you know, pull the curtain back and take a deeper look at it. Uh, or you simply like the reading style if you are interested in a personal reading with me for yourself or as a gift for someone else, please email me, maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. You can also see that info by clicking on the description or title of this video. I would be delighted to hear from you and to work with you. I will see you all in a couple of weeks for the April general readings. Until then, stay well and safe, and I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.